Welcome to this Instatical talk. My name is Tarcisio. I'm a research scientist at the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Today, I'm going to talk about our work entitled Enabling Semantic Queries Across Federated Bioinformatics Databases for you to know how to answer your complex biological questions in a short time if it's possible, of course. The plan of this presentation will be as follows. I'll give you briefly an introduction about the motivations and the, the problems that you have to solve to be able to answer these complex biological questions in terms of data integration. I will also highlight uh, our approach, how we do to solve these problems. And uh, third, I will explain you, I'll show you actually uh, applications that we developed over this integrated data for exploring it. And finally, we'll conclude this talk. For a computer system to be able to answer complex questions, often we need two preliminary steps. One of them is the data source discovery, that it's about uh, which are the data source that we need to answer a given question, a logical question, and another one is the data integration. In this talk, I will focus on the data integration part and how we take advantage of this integrated data to be able to answer complex biological questions such as what are the human genes associated with a disease for which orthologs exist in the rat and are expressed in the rat span. For example, perhaps you are studying potential drugs against a certain type of brain cancer in human, and one thing you would like to do is to identify corresponding genes, more precise orthologs genes in this case, in model species, such as the rat, and to narrow them down to the place they are expected to be expressed. To answer this question, you're gonna need, uh, in this case, for example, three data sources. For example, for the part of human genes associated with a disease, you could think about your Uniprot database, or the orthologs exist in the rat, could be the OMA database, orthologs matrix database. And finally, for the expression, gene expression data information, you could uh, take into account the VG database, for example. By doing so, we can enable actually new insights from the wealth of biological data on the web. But to be able to, to answer these complex questions, uh, we have to combine these data. And uh, we have first to solve some problems. And one of them, when you're thinking about biological data on the web, they are really scattered. One of the reasons is because uh, several biological databases have been developed and we feel or no coordination among the database stakeholders. This, in my opinion, one of the main issues of that is because these databases are often independently maintained and they don't serve the same needs or purpose. They are not uh, from the same domain, they are kind of domain specific database for example, gene expression, ontology, protein-centric database, human protein-centric, and so on. Some of those databases already do some data integration to combine a small data set, but usually it's for a specific domain, such as uh, gene expression, for example. If we consider uh, the nucleic acid research annual issue, there we can find like more than 100 key resources that are featured there. We, that, that shows that there are like many databases nowadays available. And then if you want to answer uh, complex questions uh, that needs the, to extract data from these databases, um, we need some solution for that. Then to answer complex biological questions, we often have to combine the scattered data on the web. Mostly also because this uh, database, they are domain specific, and it, those complex questions, usually they need to do cross domain and then by conse consequently uh, have to uh, extract data from different databases. Another issue is that the biological data integration is, is uh, quite complex. One of the problems is uh, because the database vary and in, in several ways, such as, for example, in the way that they model the data, the way that they structure and organize the data, for example, could be a relational model by using a technology such as MySQL or Oracle. Could be another kind of a data model called graph model that use all, use all other kind of technologies such as Mu4G, StarDog, Blaze Graph, and so on. 
And since they are using different technologies, it hardens uh, the, um, the data integration and interoperability exchange of the data as well. Another, another problem is also the syntax that they use to represent the data. They also uh, can be heterogeneous different. Uh, for example, they could use a JSON file, a XML file, a a separate file, and so on. And most important, as most of those databases are domain specific, they also have different contexts and consequently also different data meanings. And for example, if you think about the gene expression database, the difference between the concept of a gene and a protein is quite important, because you cannot see that a protein is expressed, but a gene is expressed. And for the orthology, uh, this meaning can be overlapped because we're gonna have orthology database that even though they are uh, working at the protein level sometimes, you say that a gene is a follow to another gene, that has our corresponding gene, there are this meaning of the gene and the protein uh, is, doesn't need to be uh, necessarily uh, make a difference for this case. Then, but if you want to integrate the gene expression and ontology, you have to think about to do this kind of semantic conflict. And now I'm going to talk about uh, our approach, how we solve these problems to achieve uh, data integration and uh, furthermore be able to answer complex biological questions. This work was published in the database uh, uh, volume 2019 journal. Then in this approach, actually what we do is a seamless data integration that to achieve this kind of data integration, of this scattered dispersed data from this independent data source, we believe that uh, for this case to make them independent, uh, to keep as they are, we apply the decentralized approach. We are not loading the data in a central repository or in a database. Uh, by doing so, we reduce significantly the efforts of maintenance since the data are maintained by the database owners. And the data is also always up to date because we are directly uh, retrieving the data from the original data sources. We are not loading it uh, in a new database. Why the seamless integration? Because as I quickly mentioned, the data is directly uh, extracted from the data sources and uh, are combined during the query execution time. It means when the question is being answered. To be able to connect this uh, different database, we establish some metadata that we call virtual links that bridge these different databases to be able to answer the complex biological questions afterwards. The architecture of the system of our approach is divided in three layers. One of them is the application layer that's completely independent of the other uh, layers. The second layer is the structured query interface layer. In this layer, we is where we do the uh, seamless data integration where the data is actually combined based on the metadata. And uh, we rely on the Sparkle query language, the documentation is below here. And finally, the third layer, the data store layer that contains, is composed of the database that we want to uh, integrate, that they are kept as they are. These are some of the technologies used to develop this uh, system. Now I'm going to present you uh, some applications that we developed over this uh, integrated data. For example, if you come back for the, uh, the, the question for the introduction about the human genes related to a disease with a corresponding gene expressed in the rat's brain, we could uh, go to the biosolidotexpasy.org and write disease keyword, look at the templates with the disease keyword. Afterwards, you can run it by clicking on the green button. Then you're gonna have some results. If you want to see the equivalent, uh, Sparkle Q can be also by clicking the blue button. And if you want to edit the template, you can also change, for example, from here, you can change from human to mouse. And then you can finally run the queue. Another application that's actually work in progress is the biosolid application that we aim actually for answering uh, questions in spoken English. The user uh, can 
directly write its question uh, in spoken English without, uh, that gives more flexibility. And then here also we're gonna give some suggestions of, uh, of interpretations of, this, of the questions of the user. And finally, also the answer for this, for the question actually. Hopefully this work will be, the uh, final prototype will be available uh, by the end of this year. To conclude this talk, I would like to emphasize that data integrations, data integrations, the basis for answering several biological questions across multiple data sources. Our approach actually performs a kind of seamless data integration at the query execution time. We do that for reducing netness efforts and also to keep the data always up to date. And also we show um, a readable question uh, application that we call the BioCurie uh, application, and it's available at the biosoda.exposit.org website. If you want to know more about this work, I would like to invite you to check the GitHub of the BioCurie project. Also, the, the two publications around this work uh, that was published in the database journal and the electronic notes in computer science in 2009. Thank you very much for your attention. And although I would like also to acknowledge uh, the work of uh, my collaborators and the co-authors of this work, and also the BG team and OMA team for their support. Thank you. <laughs>